So how many of you here have ever zoned out during a meeting or a conference call? I'm with you. I'm guilty as well. It happens to the best of us, and lately it seems to be happening more often than not. Uh, one of our big clients right now is PwC or PricewaterhouseCooper, big corporate company that you would expect to have lots of regiments and policies in place, especially for streamlining meetings. But that isn't the case. So today I'm here to talk about how we can improve their meeting policy. Give you a little idea about myself. Uh, I've been in the business tech industry now for almost 20 years. I've been lucky enough to have several Fortune 500 clients, and I'm experienced on all sides of the table, from engineering to team lead to project manager. And I've been in countless meetings and conference calls, and I've had the luxury to see some projects succeed, and I've had the displeasure of seeing some of them fail. And through all my career experience, one thing I feel comfortable in saying is that I know what's going to work and what's not going to work. The purpose of this presentation today is to examine the current meeting structure and policy and uh, recommend a few changes that we can make to benefit both sides, the client and the vendor being us. To give you an idea of how this presentation is going to flow, I've broken it up into a few sections. The first being the problem. I'll give you a little background about what's been going on, uh, identify where things are starting to fail, and discuss why we need to fix these things. Then we'll move in and talk about the solution. Exactly what changes can we make? Who is going to be involved in making this happen? And how do we make this happen? Or how do we get this implemented? And we'll close by looking at the results or the projected results. What can we see? What are the benefits going to be? So to give you a little idea of what's been going on and the working relationship we have right now at PwC, we're a tech company and we're expected to deliver technical solutions in a timely and cost-efficient manner. Other vendors in the past who haven't met that criteria or delivered quality work have been replaced. Uh, honestly, our team came in because another vendor ran six months over on a project and we came in with limited budget and we had to make it happen within a month to keep things moving. Uh, we were lucky enough to make that happen and that's kind of how this whole relationship started. So we've been able to keep things moving and we want to keep things moving. And right now our team is spread globally. We have some members on the East Coast, some on the West Coast, and even a couple overseas. So we've had to find ways to keep everybody up to date on progress, um, go over things that maybe need a little clarification and discuss future action items. And we've been able to do this by handling or by conducting conference calls. Right now we hold three conference calls a week on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And that's going to be a little bit about what we're going to talk about. Because of the success we've had, you know, it's brought growth. As they say, if you do good at something, you're usually rewarded with more work. And that's been the case. We've had more projects come our way. We've had to add more team members. And now, of course, there's more to talk about. And the current policies we have for this just are no longer applicable. They're starting to cause roadmaps and timelines to fall off, and it's also starting to push into budgets and really put a strain on things. Even though it may not be apparent right now, you can feel it starting. And like they say, if you don't adapt, you die. And the last thing we want is for this relationship we have with our client to die. I've identified the biggest problem we have right now with this working relationship to be our meeting policy. One of the reasons we're running so tight on roadmaps and deadlines and really pushing our budgets is because of the time we spend in these meetings. And there's a few things I'd like to do to make these meetings kind of move a little smoother. But before we can talk about that, we need to know where things are really going wrong. What are the problems? And the biggest problem we have right now is we have attendees whose presence isn't necessary. It's one thing to have a bunch of people on a call because you want them to hear what's going on, you want them to feel involved, and maybe they have something to offer. That's great. I mean, that's what we want feedback for. That's part of the strength in numbers. But other times, we have members who just overtake the conversation. And they dominate the discussion, and it's hard to get a word in edgewise. I'm sure you've all been in a conversation with someone who's talking, 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 and sometimes they're talking fast, or they're just not giving you a spot to kind of jump in and interject, maybe to ask a question, maybe to offer your thoughts. And that can be real detrimental in a business environment where 
you have a bunch of people on the phone and everyone's there because you need their input and their feedback on this project but no one else gets a chance to talk. You might shut them out and the last thing you want to do is lose a resource that you're paying for. The other problem with that kind of behavior is that you fall off the agenda. You're not following along with the guidelines set for the meeting and then other times people just blatantly go off on a tangent, whether it's something in their mind that they feel is important or it's just something that might have naturally come through the conversation, we have to find a better way to handle that so we're really getting through the agenda and staying within our time limit. That time limit, because of these other things I mentioned, is often exceeded. It's very rare that we're finishing on time and that's a big concern, especially with cost and money being related. The last thing that I'd like to talk about is the schedule. Right now, the current schedule, the three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, leaves a huge opportunity for repetition because of a lack of preparation. And that's something I'll get more into detail here. Again, the whole purpose of this presentation and this proposal is that we can reduce the cost and overhead, increase our efficiency and productivity, and you have a better chance of meeting our deadlines. And while doing all of this, we want everybody involved to enjoy the experience. You want to like what you do. It's proven that you do better work when you're happy. And that's our goal. The solution. Well, to start off, we discussed too many attendees being in the meeting. So the first thing we need to do is filter participants out. It might sound like common sense, but it's not happening. And nowadays, we can send out electronic invitations. You know, we can find out how many yeses, noes, and maybes, and even once we see them coming in, as a group we can decide maybe we don't need somebody else. Or as a team, we can say, hey, instead of the three of us from the same team being there, how about we designate one person, you relay the information back, and we go from there and prepare for the next meeting. The other problem we have is those people that dominate the conversation, and we need somebody to override these overtakers. We need the leader to step in and make sure that they can handle this. Same thing with curtailing tangents. But we need to do it in a way that we don't shut these people down. So we need to direct them to email or, or some form where we still want to hear what they're saying or discuss the topic that they're bringing to our attention. So we want to direct them to email. It gives us a chance to maybe discuss it, filter it out a little bit, and see if it's worthy of talking in the next meeting or maybe it needs another meeting. That's where we need to enforce the time limit so that we can get all these really important things done and then have these other meetings if need be. And in order to enforce the time limit, we need to start adding time frames and uh, set lengths to each section so that we can kind of gauge where we're moving through these meetings. Right now, we end up with 10 minutes left in the call and it's a scramble to kind of run through things or just chop a bunch of stuff out. That's hurting us more than it's helping. And the only way all this stuff's gonna get done is if we empower the meeting coordinator to police this discussion. Somebody has to have the power to step in and make things happen. The last part I mentioned is keeping everybody happy. And whether these meetings run long or they're effective or not, we all have to go back to work after. So one of the first things I think we can do to enhance that is by adjusting our schedule. By changing it to twice a week, to Tuesdays and Thursdays, we allow for preparation. How many of you come into work on a Monday and have to dig through backlog of emails and get yourself ready for the day? I mean, let's be honest, most of us are a little slow on a Monday. So to have a meeting on a Monday isn't really too effective. I, I say we move to Tuesday, it gives us more time to prepare, get organized for the week, and you'll bring more to the meeting on Tuesday. It also hurts our progress when we have three meetings a week. It's hard to make progress when you have a meeting on Monday that you weren't prepared for. You have to repeat things that you went over on Monday on Wednesday. Little progress is being made, and then you have another meeting on Friday to maybe rehash to plan for next week, and then who knows, that could go out the window. You have a couple days off, a lot of things are forgotten, they aren't retained. Monday again is a repetition of things that need to go over. So there's a lot of repeating, a lot of lack of preparation, and not a lot of progress being made. The other things that incentive. How many of us work salary, work a lot of hours, maybe one week you finish ahead of schedule, you want to enjoy that Friday afternoon, you want to cut out a little early. That's part of the deal, that keeps you happy, and we want to have that as well. The plan is pretty simple. First thing we need to do is document these policy changes. We need to get them written down. We need to get them approved. Once that happens, we need to distribute this and get a sign off by everybody involved so that everyone knows and is aware of the new policy and will agree to it when we start to enforce it. 
The last step is implementing it. In this case, it's fairly easy. Once you sign off, it's gone. You have to follow along. The cost. Time is money. Documentation, I'm being generous here at five hours. One week's time, five hours. You can find five hours in one week to get this documented. Distribution, email, one hour. Again, very generous. Three days to make it happen. Send it out. Request to return receipt, signature, get them back. It's effective September 1st. That means we can kick this off before the next round of projects start and we'll be able to be more efficient going forward. If you look at the total money involved, we're looking at six hours. Estimating $100 per hour, it's $600. That may seem like a lot now, but it's really not when you look at the savings. Before we start making any changes, we're spending over $14,000 a month in meeting time. After we make these changes, we'll be spending around $3,000 in meeting time. If you look at the way this progresses, the cost goes up exponentially as each level of increment increases. That's a difference of $11,000 that we can save each month by putting these new rules into place with our meetings. So just to go over one more time, we're going to be changing the schedule and frequency from three times to two times. The number of participants from eight almost to half and four and enforcing the time limit from one and a half hours going over to a hard one hour. So we're cutting down and you see where all the savings is coming from right here. This is what gears us up for the future. We're going to cut down that cost and that overhead. We're going to be more efficient and more productive Deadlines are going to be met, and everybody's going to be happy. And that was the whole purpose of this. That's what we're going for. That's what we want. We want to keep this relationship alive, and we want to keep everybody involved enjoying what they do. Any questions? Uh, why has this not been corrected already? It's a good question. You would think something like this would be in place, but honestly, I think people have been content billing for the time that they're sitting idle on these calls. And it, it hasn't gotten to a point where the budgets and deadlines have fallen far enough off for it to shake things up, but I'm feeling the strain and I'm seeing the boat rock, so I'm trying to be a little proactive rather than reactive. Any other questions? Do you think the new schedule allows for enough time to discuss the projects? It's a fair question. Uh, the way I mentioned we cut things down and we can divert tangents and stuff offline should give us enough time to get everything based on the agenda done during a meeting. So if we plan properly and we have things timed out, shouldn't be a problem, and it's not to say that we can't set up other meetings for specific discussions offline for a later time. Anybody else? Great, thank you for your time. My name is Tom Dematicor, you have a good evening.